Let's go over the subject of subdivision levels and 3D code. How does it work and where is it located? Well, it's actually using different terminology. It's called multi-resolution. If you're coming from an application like ZBrush or Mudbox, typically what you would do in those applications is you import a low polygon model from a standard 3D application and as you advance into your intermediate and high subdivision levels or high detail stages, then you may find occasions where you have to go back down into lower subdivision levels in order to perform large scale edits on your model. For example, if you need to reshape or maybe repose the model, then you need to step down to a lower subdivision level. And the reason for that, as many of you already know, is the higher the poly count, the larger the performance hit. The way 3D Coat handles it is rather than you stepping down to a stored subdivision level, it allows you to step down to a lower resolution version at any point. And what 3D Coat does is in the process, it caches the original version onto your hard drive and in its place, it will provide a lower resolution or a decimated version of that model so that you can make those large scale edits without it really bogging down. We'll now put this into practice by hovering over a layer in the Vox Tree layer panel and you'll see the cache disk icon. If I hover outside the panel, it disappears and that is to reduce clutter. If it's in a cached state, then you'll see this arrow icon, and that lets you know that this particular layer is cached currently. It's still going to show the proxy that is decimated to the level that you determined, but again, the cache icon itself will not be visible until you hover over the layer. When we click on the cache to disk icon, 3D Coat will use either the default level of proxy resolution or the last level you selected. In order to pre-select a proxy resolution level, or to see what is currently selected, we need to go to the Geometry menu, which was formerly labeled the Voxel menu. For those that are watching some of the older videos, there have been some terminology changes since version 4.5. So, in the Geometry menu, if we go down to the lower third portion, you can see a list menu for caching and then also the proxy method and this determines how many levels of subdivision you step down. The lower the number, the higher the polygon count. The higher the number, the lower the poly count. So this is like stepping down a set of stairs. The lower you go on this list, the lower the poly count. Now, as you may already know, with decimation, it's a pretty smart algorithm. It's going to supply the proxy object with higher levels of polygonal density where it determines they are needed, such as hard edges and angular surface details. And conversely, it will provide lower levels of density where they are not needed. On the body here, I'm looking at about 22 million polygons. So if I reduce it down to eight levels of subdivision, then it's still going to look very close to what I see now on this original uncached state. Before I click the cache to disk icon, I want to share a little workflow tip that I use and you may find useful as well. Let's go to the geometry menu and in the caching list, I'm going to hover over the toggle proxy mode option. Then I will hit the end key to assign a hotkey to it. And when you do, you might elect to choose your up arrow and that way you don't have to come to the VoxTree layer panel to cache your layer. If I know I want to cache the body, I know it's already selected. Let's say, for example, if the vest was already selected, but I wanted to select the body, again, I don't have to come over here. I can just hover over the body anywhere and hit the H key, and that's going to select that object in the VoxTree layer panel. Now, if I want to cache it, I'm just going to hit my up arrow key. The decimation algorithm is naturally going to take longer than a reduction because it has a much more complicated computation to process.
And typically, the higher the poly count is, the longer it takes to go through the decimation algorithm. Okay, so it reduced it down to about two and a half million polygons. And yet, it looks very similar. Turn on the wireframe. Let's go to the fingers. It's a little more dense where you have these crevices here, or these edges. Once more, the curved arrow icon indicates this layer is currently in proxy mode. I can now use large-scale editing tools such as Pose, Move, or Transform without much, if any, performance lag. When using these tools, you also happen to have an option in the toolbar for conforming a retopo mesh, should you have one residing in the retopo workspace. In practical terms, if you're importing a low-poly base mesh to sculpt on, It'd be a good idea to import an additional copy into the Retopo workspace beforehand in order to use that as your Retopo mesh or baking target once the sculpting phase is complete. Another major benefit of caching layers is that it gives you a much smaller memory footprint. It also happens to reduce the load on your graphics card so that you can rotate about your model much more smoothly. In a scene with a lot of layers and high overall poly count, the difference can be rather dramatic. So when you're working on a relatively detailed character with clothing and a lot of secondary elements such as belts and straps and buttons and buckles and things of that sort, then this makes a lot of sense to go ahead and cache everything you're not working on. So let's go back to the geometry menu and I'm going to go ahead and pull this off for the time being. And in the caching menu, we looked at toggling your proxy mode you can uncache visible objects. And this saves you a bit of time rather than having to go through layer by layer. Cache visible objects is just the opposite. So again, if you want to go ahead and just cache everything, 3D Coat is going to use the same proxy subdivision level to cache all the visible objects. Clear all caches will delete all the cache files, so you're probably going to want to avoid that except in rare cases. When you cache a layer and sculpt on the proxy version, 3D Coat will translate the changes made to the proxy mesh back to the cached original, and any details sculpted on the original will be preserved. So let me demonstrate that. Now, I'm going to just work on this vest here. It's already cached. I'm going to go ahead and uncache it by clicking on that icon. And let's go back to a different material here. So if I zoom in and hit my wireframe hotkey, you can see it's pretty dense. So I turn my wireframe back off. And I'm going to isolate the vest by holding down the Alt key, clicking on the visibility icon. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go to the proxy method and I'm going to rip that off. Okay, and what I did is I hit the N key on each of these decimation levels, or subdivision levels if you like, and I assigned them to the lower arrow keys on my keyboard so they're easy to remember going from left to right. Again, I prefer using decimation rather than reduction, even though it does take a little bit longer for 3D Coat to evaluate the mesh. Reduction uses a uniform polygon distribution, which is much faster to calculate, but it looks very degraded in comparison to decimation. However, you may elect to hide objects that you're not working on anyway. So in that sense, you can go ahead and feel free to reduce. That way it, it quickly caches it and you're going to hide it anyway. So you don't really have to worry about what it's going to look like. But if you want it to look as close as possible to the original, you want to leave it visible. And if you plan to work on the model, then you may elect to stick with decimation rather than reduction. So I'll go ahead and set this using my hotkeys. I'll use my right arrow key in order to set the proxy resolution. And then I'm going to hit my up arrow key to toggle into a cache state. And you can see I'll go from about five and a half million down to about 300,000. So that's quite a reduction. So I can see what it's done to all my stitching. So let's go ahead and make a quick change here. I'm going to hit the S key to turn on symmetry. 
Okay. And with the move tool active, so I'm just going to hold the control key and it's going to move along the normals rather than moving in screen space. And I might even use a brush here. I'll undo that and hit the S key, turn symmetry off for the time being. Go to my presets. Maybe use clay. If I want to do that. Go back to the Move tool. Okay, so now I'm going to hit my up arrow key to come out of the cache state and restore this volume or this model back to its original, but it's going to translate all those changes. You can see how the details shifted along with the edited parts of the mesh, but the details were preserved nonetheless. And that will conclude this overview of working with multiple levels of resolution or subdivision in 3D Code Sculpt Workspace. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.